They say Baghdad. They say the Gaza Strip. They say Soweto. They say Aleppo. They say Somalia. They say Beijing. This is Trinidad. I wonder if we could say that tomorrow. I wonder if tomorrow we could sing them words with such conviction. This ain't no banana republic. This ain't no dictatorship. This is not no... How do you pronounce it? Junta or Junta? I don't know. I just read it. But I read it as Junta. This is not no... African dictatorship. This is not no South American junta. This is not Somalia, Soweto, Aleppo, Beijing, Baghdad. This is not any of those countries that you traditionally associate with oppression. This is Trinidad. Trinidad's claim to fame is we have... Uh, don't argue with any of what I'm about to tell you. Don't argue at all. If you argue, leave your passport and your birth certificate at the door and go away. Trinidad has the most beautiful woman in the world. That's the hardest part about leaving Trinidad. You know? The most beautiful woman in the world. Trinidad is famous for being a failed nation. But we are a toy nation. We're not a real nation. We play one on TV. So the rest of the world watch us. Like a toy. It's not real. I mean, it's a country. It's independent. It have a flag. It have a flag. But they don't take us on like they take on all the big countries. Trinidad is Trinidad. Every now and then, you will see at the Olympics a red, white, and black climb up and win something. And they say, wow, that little tiny country. And they wow, da, 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 da. Every now and then, because the world, the world, people are not as informed as you think they are. These little shows they do in Trinidad, asking Trinidadians if you know um, how to spell Bumsy Day or what's a larger blast, and people making fools of themselves. Not just Trinidad, you know, worldwide. In fact, and you could check this, which is hilarious, since Black Panther came out, Wakanda, Illinois, which is a real place, has seen a massive upsurge in tourism for black people in what is predominantly a white community. So everybody booking their tickets and touching down in Wakanda, Illinois. And the Wakandans are having to deal with learning how to be all-inclusive. And that's the power of media. That's the power of the movie. So now Wakanda, Illinois is kind of on the map. But anyway, I don't want to stray too far. This beautiful country that we all take for granted. You know what? You know when we say we like it, so what we mean? We're not casting aspersions on others, you know. Check the trend. I have been watching something for the longest while. The people most likely to say, we like it so, we jamming still, we, not, we ain't going to do nothing about it, are the people who they're not going to do anything about it. They're lazy. Politically, they're lazy. They don't, it's not that they don't care, but they're not motivated to act in their own best interest. Like the frog in the pot of water. The science tells you that a frog, if it jumps into hot water, will jump right out. But if you put him in room temperature water and bring it to a slow boil, he will allow himself to be boiled to death. And Trinidad, and last night I told Trinidad, last night I told Trinidad, in the last decade, you've spent $720 billion. And for that money, you could have built 200 schools 41 mini hospitals, a bridge to Tobago, a bridge to Venezuela. You could have built the 100,000 houses that the HTC says it needs. You could have put water in everybody's taps. We could have built the maritime security wall, moved the port, built a new city for the capital and still have $300 billion change. And not even that was enough to get Chinese bags. We're cool. We're good. 
We like that meme where people say, today, I just want to move just enough so people don't think I'm dead. That's us. That's our politics. If stuff sharing and people say, hey boy, come down again, we iPhones, we come in. And then we support you. We will, rave, we will wave your flag. We will wave it hard. That don't mean we supporting you. Because the election results don't match the crowds at rallies. And the political parties know that. But ultimately, and don't vex with me, don't kill the messenger. Trinidad is how it is because of us. Trinidadians. And no Jamie, Jamie, we're not numb. It's not numb, we're lazy. Because you take a Trinidadian and you drop him in Pennsylvania, Manchester, Barcelona, Reykjavik. Drop a Trinidadian in those places and the neighbors knock on your door and say, tonight we are protesting, they are changing the, the ordinance where we put out the compost on a Tuesday and the plastics on a Thursday and they want to switch it and that doesn't work for us. And we're protesting. And the whole media will show up, 32 people, hell no, we won't go, hell no, we like it so. And the Trinis who just arrived, in the line, we there, there's the tech, there's what you do. So it's not that we don't know how to do it, we will, if we're in a place that works, but not here. Not Trinidad. In Trinidad, how it hang its wing? Everybody in Trinidad have an uncle or a family or auntie and a tante that have a green card that if push come to shove, all are we going to sleep on he or she couch if we get out. Trinidad's, Trinidadians retirement plan usually have to do with escaping from Trinidad and Tobago. You know, check that. The people who are forced to live on pension in this country, the government has to know that a human being in Trinidad and Tobago cannot survive on $3,000 a month. Cannot. You cannot. People do. They make do. They manage. But when you push all of the operative things that make up a life, when you create a property tax, their landlord have to pass that property tax on to them. When you raise the price of gas to TN Tech and TN Tech raise their rates, TN Tech that bill going to them. When you when you raise the price of gas, the guy that picks them up on a Tuesday twice a month to take them to the bank and to buy all their drugs and the medicine and the groceries or whatever, he had to raise the rate to them. Their three thousand dollars they raise. So you just make life a little bit harder for the elders and the disabled and the people who can't work. And Chinese, we just take it in stride. We go work it out. And have a mango tree in the back, sell some mango. Me, I don't know. I go on. The people tell me my hair not looking sexy tonight. It's a night like that. It was a gym night. But ignore the hair. Don't get distracted by the hair. Gonna get worse before it get better. And no, because the other night I did a video and I thought my hair was looking relatively decent and a guy asked what's wrong with my hair. So I said, well, hell, if, if my hair looking good and you're not, and you don't find my hair looking good, then I don't have to keep my hair looking good because nobody ain't taking it on or they're they, they reading me wrong. So how it hang its way? I will treat my hair like how Chinese is treat Trinidad. How it hang its way? But the real, real point, though, is really and truly, tomorrow, Kamala Pasad Bisesa and the opposition seats have called on the government to bring back the anti gang bill to the parliament. And now that the government has agreed on a sunset clause that ends, at election time, Kamala has agreed that they will support the bill. Now, that bill is not a good bill. In Trinidad Tobago, there are five television stations. Because when TV closed down, there are five. There is Gael, which is owned by Errol Fabian, 
and I don't know who watches that. There is Synergy TV that is owned by Howard Chinley of You Can't Give My Wife a Ticket, PNM fame, and Stuart Young of last night on some show on TV quoting Philip Alexander and people messaging me and copy, copy, pick, taking pictures of myself, this clown using your words. Then there is Massa Media, TV6, Express, and Sabga News Network, CNC3 Guardian. All of those, with the exception of Errol Fabian's Gael, which I think operates upstairs at Chicken and Chips Place in Curep, all of those won't give you real news. They'll give you government propaganda. Anytime you see a story bus on a government minister, that story is bus with approval from the prime minister and all of them involved. The media can make a note because if the media publishes or broadcasts information that the government does not want broadcast, the government will pull advertising. And advertising now, in this, in this Papi Sholan, without government advertising, the last two employees in Sabga News Network, Nicholas Sabga and Shelly Das, will have to be fired. And they will have to go and join Samson Anton on South Key begging for change. Without government money, Desha Rambachan have to get a real job because twirling your hair and smiling on camera is not one. And without government advertising, Hema Ramkesun have to go back out in the real world and trade giggling for money. And I'm being facetious. And I'm always going to be facetious. Because the Minister of Sport, the most junior and jokey of all the ministers in this country, I mean, I wouldn't use the word jackass or waste the word jackass on Daryl Smith. Daryl Smith is just... If I were to write the eulogy for the PNM, Daryl Smith is a good ad for bird control. And I would hold a picture of him and put it up next to the Jurex aisle and say, if you don't put a cover on your chicken, you could end up raising one of these. Do you want a Daryl Smith? No? Cover your head. And that will work. But he, he, today, when they called him to find out about all of the athletes that are saying that the Ministry of Sport is not doing its job, he hung up on the media. Daryl Smith. Daryl Smith hung up on you. That, that's like I remember once I gave a Spranger a dollar and the man stoops and give me back. Daryl Smith hanging up on the media is like a vagrant stoopsing at you. And the media to take that. And if Daryl could hang up on you, know that. You see who they bring to put in the Ministry of Communication? The heavy roller. I mean, if Berkey Burke didn't throw her down for good, that started up. I mean, if that fall down, you gotta bring in Junior Sammy to bring it, to put it back up, to start up. But the fact that she back as a minister again, she like herpes. I, when I put that out today, a man from the Ministry of National Security called me to tell me I owe him a laptop. He said a mouthful of coffee on my laptop and I don't know if it's spoiled. But it's true. She like the herpes virus. When you think she gone, surprise, it's Molly. And she's not regular. So you can't say she like menstruation. You know menstruation coming. Molly will just show up at a, at a time when you're least expecting Molly. Look who they bring to run communication. 
You think Hema and Desha and Golda Lee, Golda Lee who trying to sing herself into heaven, you think them three could take on the heavy roller? Marlene dealing with Berkey Burke. Marlene get one guess to her swearing in. She bring Berkey Burke. Marlene is a baddest. She's a baddest. You ain't taking on that so. Don't play. Now he's your minister of communication. Look what they bring. That is Keith Christopher Mugabe Samga Rowley telling you we ain't care about you. Now the government is going tomorrow to act in cahoots with the opposition to pass a law that will I want to tell you something again. Police in this country don't need provocation to lock people up, you know. The laws in this country are so loosely written. Hear this. Kern Coffey, who was arrested and charged with telling police officers who were in his neighborhood to find something good to do, yesterday appeared before the court. And senior magistrate Cheryl Ann Antoine said, while the police officers had their jobs to do, they did not have to be so sensitive and could have ignored Coffey. Coffey, 23, was charged with behaving in a disorderly manner and resisting arrest while 15 officers were on exercise duty in La Romaine on Tuesday. I read the whole thing and then I'm coming back to pick it apart for you. We're going to deal with this. It was 4.20 p.m. that Constable Sanka, dressed in police operational wear, was on duty along George Street, La Romaine. He saw Coffey standing on the side of the road gesticulating and heard him shouting, Why well, don't I find something good to do? Now, how is that an arrestable offense? How is that an arrestable defense? The officer approached Coffey, who was gesticulating violently. What was this man doing? Because the way the article was written, he was shadow boxing. And I don't know that there is a law that says you can't shadow box in our domain. But Farris is the Attorney General. And if anybody capable of writing a law, making it illegal to shadow box in La Romaine is Farris. I wonder what the media meant when it said the officer approached Coffee, who was gesticulating violently. And Coffee said, boy, you can't do me nothing. You know this bend the hand like this. Eh? You know you're, when you're bad, it's, it's like that bend it like that. You, you can't just do so. You have to bend. But I, I could see it. I could see I could, I, 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 as a chinny, I see I've been in situations. But how is all of that? How is all of that a chargeable offense? How? Police prosecutor, Sergeant Denzel Alexander, absolutely no relation said Coffey was told he was under arrest for disorderly behavior and the officer held on to his right hand. Coffey pulled away violently. He did so on two occasions. How do you pull away violently? What does that mean? After you pull away, to high kick? What are you saying, media? What are you trying to paint? What is the impression? The man tell him, find something better to do. The police walk up to him and obviously... Mr. Man was stunting. He's 23 years old. He ain't no who in the neighborhood watching. So he had to defend his stunt. Boy, you can't do me nothing, boys, about this. And you grab the man hand and tell him he under arrest. Now, the man know when his dotishness, that all Alexander's related, Lyndon Mack, watch yourself. Eh? In his dotishness, the man know you can't arrest him for that. How is that disorderly conduct? A man gets shoot in his hand in the same south. And the person responsible for the gunshot and the arrest for disorderly conduct. But poor, what's the coffee first name? Kern. Kern Coffee. Get locked up for telling police. 
find something better to do now. Coffee was arrested, babe. Coffee was arrested with the assistance of other officers and taken to Marabella Police Station. And I could hear that drive going down there. Can't do you nothing. Yes, I've had this. You will see what police can do. You remember that song? You remember that? I wonder if I can find that. I want to show what police can do. I, I show him my agent. If you know that, they say, um, if she don't know that song, she too young for you. I want to see if I can find it. Look at there. Who that? Police, why blow? Oh, so you is the Babylon books that is causing disruption in the domestic affairs. I am Constable Brown, then call me Boy Blue. I have here a warrant to arrest you, cause you need to be first to ship black and blue. Then ask what the hell the police can do. I, I come to show what police can do. I go and show what police can do. I have a button for like wax stone. I'm going to introduce it to your job one. Back so you teach in your morning and go. Make your ears them ring like government phone. Drop up your nose up, they find your looks. I come to show what police can do. So that's what they're telling the man going down the road. Going down the road. Yes, I'm about this. We must show you you ain't about this. So 15 police was on duty in Laromain. They ain't tell we about nobody else here lock up, you know. But Kern Coffee, who tell them, well, you find something better to do. Defense attorney Frank Gittins told the court, his client worked as an electrician for the past six years. He also said Coffee was married and a father of two. He's a member of society. He's a contributing member of society. He's an electrician six years now. He is a married man. He has two children. Gittin said, even though we live in a country where there is freedom of speech, you, you put yourself at risk. I want you to... This line is why I am reading this, because this is an escalation to insanity. This, the entire exchange and, and how the journalist wrote it, this is, this is real comedy. Even though we live in a country where there's freedom of speech, you put yourself at risk how it lands on people's ears. Now you tell me what kind of precedent you set there. What did you set there as a precedent? He didn't intend for it to escalate to this level. Obviously not. Mr. Coffee wasn't looking for a lockup. Mr. Coffee was stunting. And police supposed they have no law against stunting. None. Police had no right flexing. Police had no business. Gittin said his client resisted arrest because he was confused that he was being arrested for his comments. He said there was a small element of provocation in the case. Where is the provocation? Where is the provocation? The magistrate said, while there is a crime situation in the country, the police didn't have to be so sensitive. She said Coffey had foolishly uttered the words. He didn't even use obscene language. The magistrate don't know what is the words on the obscene language list because they have no list. Eh? I tell you, if you have the money and a law degree to confront everything in this country, you make them fat, you know. Because the magistrate said he didn't even use obscene language. The law is annoying language and the law doesn't list what is the annoying language. Um, they could have ignored him and continued on with their business. She asked for the reason for coffee not being granted bail at the station. I come to show what police can do. I come to show what police can do. A long time ago, you see some of you, man. It seems like you love the beat up woman. Cause every little thing on a race on a hand. Like you see no thing, them from this land. When we the police on a call Babylon. They have to give them protection. Roses are red, violets are blue. Stay them all bright, but not bright like you. You cannot stand up in La Romaine and ask police to find something better to do. That is, do the magistrate 
the magistrate asked, using courtroom language, what the hell wrong with y'all? I was told that I left Loop out of the list of media houses, and I really shouldn't have. I don't know what is Loop's role in the media. I know that I get a lot of my updates from Loop, so I want to say that Loop kind of doing a job outside there, and I hope they become an, a true independent media. So Loop, don't be buffing me. Take your, take your props. But back to this. Have respect for the law, boy. You can't be so mad of all the stunt you went on stunt. You could have gone in KFC and cussed them about how greasy the chicken is. You choose to come out in Laro name and rough up police. They come to show you what they could do. And listen eh? Imagine you living in a country where tomorrow the government, with the full support of the opposition, are going to pass into law. You know, Philip, you need to be a little more prepared. I want to tell you that. You can't be coming and then searching. People have things to do. I'm not trying to find it. So I apologize up front. But there is Are we gonna deal with Marlene? Eh? Don't think we done with Marlene. I'm trying to find this. A man just buffed me. He said my policy is good, but he don't like my delivery. I feel like a cricketer. I feel like a cricketer get buffed there. Man don't like my delivery. But now nah, sorry. We was running late. And I thought I would make it a little more palatable. I apologize. I can get very serious. I even comb my hair. The night I say I'm coming out so, who begs laws? And clearly people got vexed. And one of the people who got vexed and buffed me was the same person who reminded me to mention Loop. Faris Alrawi is piloting a bill in the parliament tomorrow that the UNC is going to support that includes powers of police officers. I just read to you a police officer lock up a man for asking, for telling him something. So police don't need powers. You give them more powers. Powers of police officers 11 clause 15 empowers a police officer A to arrest without a warrant a person who he has reasonable cause to believe is a gang leader, gang member, who has committed an offense under the act. Well, boy, Kern Coffee, if you had stunt in La Romaine next week, they lost your ass in jail. Your Honor, we have reason to believe that this married man with two children, this six-year electrician, is also a gang member, and we are researching it now. So we are asking you to hold him without bail. B. To enter and search a dwelling house without warrant. While you lock up Kern Coffee, they go in your house, upset everything, and your wife and your children crying because you can't be stunting with police. See, to enter any place or premises without a warrant where he has reasonable cause to believe that a gang member may be found all in the back of KFC kitchen, pot falling down on the ground because you're hiding a gang member in here. 12, close 16. Enables, hear the words they use now, enables a police officer to detain a person who he reasonably suspects of having committed an offense for a period not exceeding 72 hours. This detention can be effected without a warrant. Now, how do you, my partner who both me from a delivery, I will do a cleaner, I will do a cleaner run up and you will see the whole photos. I want to ask, how do you Justify giving police in this country who, and we have police officers in the country who will tell you, I have policemen on my page who's buffed me that I'm not supporting PNM. How you can give them more power?
How do you justify giving a police officer who with his 15 colleagues could detain Kern Coffee without bail, lock him in a cage, take him? You know how much money they waste? The magistrate's time go back, the gas in the car, the manpower required to arrest Kern Coffee and take him before the court to prove a point what police can do. You think you really need to pass that anti-gang bill for them little stunters in Nelson Street? Police could go in Nelson Street tonight. They did it. Look, four hundred thousand dollars. How much are you? Take a four hundred thousand and share it. Is now we money? We could do wrongful, um, wrongful arrest. When the case call, when did Kamala have her state of emergency? When the case call, we could settle. All your girl, ting, and everybody nice. That is not why Faris won this law. Faris trying to shut down social media. Faris need to shut down political dissent. Faris need, Faris need to oppress and suppress. Faris is a dictator. He grew up in Baghdad. This is what he knows. That freedom of speech chafes him. He wears silk drawers. That's like telling the man to wear a crocus bag for drawers. He can't do that. Faris doesn't know how to live in a country where people could just so put up pictures of his children stunting in Kamuto with high-powered firearms. Or oh, how short young business come in the that his wife throw him and he draws something out of the street. You see, they don't want that. They control Sadga News Network. Hema will never say it. Hema will never... Kamal? Kamal is so mad. Kamal will end up boxing chicken in KFC. Kamal know where his bills paid. Kamal, Golali, whoever else stunting there at night. Fazir had taken it on. Because they don't send Fazir to let in his ass. Alright, you flex a little bit. Boil down. We understand police interfere with your family in El Socorro. We're sorry, boil down, Fazir. But you don't have any other outlet but social media. And you have nobody else but me. Every now and then, Samuel Stafford will put out a video. And then he will say, he done. He gave up the whole world. He going and become a priest. He going and plant peace in Tobago. Peter had it. He did some lovely videos. And then Peter decide, fire truck this. They said for me, eyes are full 1%. I don't have the money yet, but they could pull me in. I don't have to do this. And then look, look the 1% come out themselves with their own party. So even better, you have nobody but me. They coming at me high, low, hang, jack, and friggin' game. They have me in court with matters. Defamation matters that in any other civilized world could have never get into the court. They have no line, no level, no muster to pass, and we're just doing it. Check me your life, defame your name, send in Wilson, send Corn Beef Man. Corn Beef Man called a meeting yesterday. In the state land, they gave him to build a mosque. He built a food court. And Corn Beef Man called all the Muslim leaders and tell them, work with me and you will get time on TV and thing, and they tell him thanks, no thanks. I half didn't come. The Muslim community wants nothing to do with Corn Beef Man. But these people... You think you get in, in Chinan Tobago, anybody else besides me? My partner, I didn't see a name, I will get you on the rerun when I finish and I go back and I watch the whole thing to see a name who tell me, you love my policies, you don't like my delivery. I want you to understand, I'm not talking just to you, I'm talking to everybody. I'm making sure that I can walk, what is it? Walk with kings and not lose the common touch. I don't, I don't want... You to think that this caramel latte complexion that I have means that I have to behave a certain way. How I am, that is me. This love me, don't love me, this is me. But instead of that, and I know the chances of the Progressive Empowerment Party ending up in government is either massively successful or slim to none. We ain't getting six seats. The PEP will either get 39 seats or will get zero. And then they'll stunt on the night they count in the votes 
and highlight what we don't get. If we win, they have a saying, and I want the media to hear me. I want Hema and Fazir and Desha and Golali. I want Nicholas Sabga to hear me. I want to Brian Haynes at Synergy. I want you all to hear me. There is a saying, the day the lion gets his hands on the gun, recorded history will change. Right now, history is recorded for the hunter. No problem. The lion will have his day. Mark that. Mark it down. Because if you broadcasting the night and the counting votes and the PEP in the lead? No. No, that the change is upon us. That the times of the abuser, the self glorifying, corrupt, mocking pretender has come to a swift and sudden end. If you had a progressive empowerment party government in power, find my partner who didn't like my delivery. I'm doing a long run up now. Brother, I'm coming in over the wicket. Call him. Listen to this. If you had a progressive empowerment party government in power tonight, this is what we were going to the parliament with tomorrow. And tell Stuart to get out the pen and paper and take notes, because he likes to copy my words, copy well. 21 policies at a glance. Number one, this is the Progressive Empowerment Party. Our job is to change this country for those that have been left behind, those who have been abused, those whose $720 billion was stolen by Manning, Kamala, and Keith in the last 12 years because we have nothing yet to show for it. This is what a progressive empowerment party government would sound like. We put these in an order for a reason. 21 of our policies at a glance. Take note, Stuart. Home ownership for all. Zero deposit, zero interest for 30 years for first-time homeowners for up to $1.5 million, allowing even minimum wage earners to own a home. Number two. National security. Establish radar connected security platforms three miles out at sea to create a virtual ring around Trinidad and Tobago manned by law enforcement professionals and equipped with fast attack boats and interceptor helicopter gunships that would enforce, stop and search for all marine craft entering our waters, bringing to an end the illegal trades in guns, drugs and human cargo once and for all. You see, you have a government with a prime minister and a national security team that understands. Close the borders. Don't talk about it. Don't stunt about it. Shut it down. Three, first world law enforcement. Engage the services of foreign law enforcement, internal affairs and investigative teams to clean up the police service of corruption and criminal activity. Establish continuous training and assessment inclusive of mandatory drug and polygraph testing. Incentivize law enforcement through bonuses and rewards for exemplary service. Establish promotion policy based on merit and instructing by knowledge and skill development as well as unblemished records. Four, from criminals to contributing citizens. Those who run afoul of the law and end up in jail would be given the tools to return to society better equipped than when they entered. Mandatory literacy, therapeutic counseling, and conflict resolution skills, together with opportunities to learn trades and even attain university degrees, would be offered to encourage personal development and provide hope and opportunity away from a life of crime. Five, first world healthcare. Build and operate 41 constituency healthcare facilities, complete with accident and emergency minor surgery services that will put healthcare within easy reach of all citizens. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Deploy professionally trained, call center controlled, paramedic ambulance service to fire stations, health centers and or police stations throughout the country to allow for emergency response in under 10 minutes nationwide. Monitor fleet via GPS. 6. Prestige education for all. 
Abolish the abusive SEA. Make all schools 10 years zone schools. Establish a grade point average GPA system that monitors the performance of the students, the teachers, and the principals simultaneously. Create Constituency Education Board of Supervisors. Seven, higher education and skills training. Make education finance available that can be repaid either as loans or through public service in disciplines deemed essential to national development. Establish assessment facilities for skills and trade certification. Develop a national trades and skills master plan to guide career choices. Eight, food independence. Set food targets based on national consumption data. Make farmland available rent-free to small farmers. Set crop schedules, purchase harvests, and distribute produce through 41 constituency, wholesale and retail markets. Nine, Tobago and Trinidad. Until an actual bridge is built, we must work to ensure that all goods and services that are available in Trinidad are also in available in Tobago at the same prices, and that movement between both islands is uncomplicated and affordable. Establish within the sister isle opportunities for further education in tourism and agriculture. Create credit facilities that support the development of these and other industries. 10. Alternative Renewable Energy Develop alternatives to oil and gas. Encourage wind farms, solar arrays, and tidal generators used to provide cheap and abundant clean energy for all. 11. Clean, reliable, pipe-borne water for all. Decentralize water management and distribution to all 41 constituencies through the establishment of constituency-owned and operated water purification and distribution plants. Now, instead of one mass, I have 41. Responsible for sourcing their own supply through bulk transmission, wells, rainwater retention dams and or ponds and dis or desalination. This plan would quickly allow all citizens to benefit from a reliable, clean source of water 24-7. And a progressive empowerment party government will audit two companies, Wasa and Petrotrin, both of which have burned through billions of dollars and been used by successive governments to steal. 12. A war on poverty. Make universal home ownership a reality and job creation a top priority. Encourage foreign direct investment in labor-intensive business partnerships. Set medium-term national jobs for all master plan that leaves no citizen behind. Establish living wage policy to guide minimum wage. 13. Regulate the financial sector. Interest to be paid on depositors' funds at rates set by Central Central Bank. Abolish all banking fees not compliant with terms of banking license. Open the banking sector to international competition. Cap the spread on foreign exchange. The difference between the prices for buying and selling foreign exchange, the spread, puts an unnecessary 10 to 13% tax on the economy. Capping it under 3% would save billions of dollars lost to artificial inflation and profiteering. 14. From employee to employer, start up support for small businesses with demonstrated potential for success. Operational credit to assist with recurring expenditure of rent, electricity, and raw materials for approved projects, monitored by dedicated case officers designed to achieve profitability in quick time. 15. Public office reform. Make all public office holders accountable. Enact recall and termina termination legislation for instances of non-performance and misconduct in public affairs. 16. Electoral reform. Cap election spending that disqualifies candidates for breaches. Enact equal opportunity media law. Remove the $5,000 deposit currently required to contest an election. Candidates must reside within the constituency they hope to contest. 17. An end to corruption. Shut down all special purpose companies and establish robust and transparent tenders processes that disconnect purchase decisions and contractual awards away from the political directorate. Sell non-essential state companies. 18. No more mega contractors. Decentralize all public developmental and maintenance works to the constituencies with all contractors and employees having to reside within the constituencies where the projects are located. 19. Decriminalize marijuana. Medicinal marijuana is now the number one cash crop in California and other jurisdictions. Grown for export to the global pharmaceutical industry could create massive revenue streams and much needed jobs. Regulated and controlled the way tobacco and alcohol are would allow for much needed protections and controls and remove the criminal underworld from the equation. 20. National Plastic Bottle Policy.
Apply tax to plastic bottles at manufacture or importation stage. Redeem tax for return of discarded bottles so as to encourage environmental cleanup, provide a ready stock of material for road building and construction industries, and generate revenue for those least employable and most in need. 21. First World Development. Establish new city within easy access from all corners of Tran Tobago for offices of state currently based in Port of Spain. Implement online and ATM payments wherever possible for ease of payment and decentralization of transactions. Properly done, this would end the hours lost to traffic faced by state employees twice daily and put essential service within easy reach of all. These policies will end systemic corruption, shut down the drug trade, and rein in the rapacious banking industry. They will broaden society and create a first world nation built on hope and opportunity for all. Even if you do not support the Progressive Empowerment Party, ask your political leader, why have you never thought to do any of the above? Under a PEP government, you can own a home, properly educate, feed and look after your family in a safe and democratic environment where all the resources of the nation are put to work for the people. What are the others offering? What have they actually done when in office? The changes necessary to fix our country are within your grasp. Vote yourself a better nation. One people under one flag. Brother, I hope you watch the whole innings and not just the first two ball. Because that delivery day, I'm telling you, I take wicket after wicket after wicket. The Progressive Empowerment Party, and that is just, that is only 21 of a massive policy document called Reboot the Republic that will undo and redo the madness that is Trinidad and Tobago and take us back to a place where we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, could actually have a nation that we're willing to call home. There is a reality that is inescapable, that both the PNM and the UNC has conspired with others to rob, defraud, and th steal the people's money. And that cannot be allowed to continue if you want to live in a country that works. If you want to retire and grow old in your home, if your children, if you want your children to grow up in a safe environment where they could maximize their potential, you cannot continue to make the same mistakes and expect different results. A vote for the PNM and the UNC is a continuation of the mismanagement, corruption, tribal, racist, polarized nation where nothing works. Nothing works. Nothing works. We the people have to get together and say shadow ministers to handle this. I want to tell you something. A progressive empowerment party will separate the executive from the legislature. That means members of parliament cannot be ministers. They can only be members of parliament. All they can do is serve the constituents. That's their only job. But they will provide oversight in the parliament and we will hire CEOs. We will hire a CEO of health, a CEO of education, a CEO of whatever the, whatever the ministry is now, and that person would be given a clear job description, clear goals, with clear measurables, budgets. It will be an agreed contract and will be brought back before the parliament, broadcast live on TV. Your chief executive officer of health will come and explain to the nation, you said in six months, $50 million later, we would be here. Where are we? Tell us where we are. Just as 
show you food they mean. Food them out. Register and food them out. If they don't see food them out, stain your finger and food them out. Show them no mercy food them out. Put them out with total skull and utter disdain. Let's put our country together again. of marijuana that will be it will have to be as a result of an entire national conversation and education program we are not talking about making the country a free fall for everybody to get high we're talking about decriminalizing marijuana so we can grow it and sell it in bulk to the pharmaceutical industry we also believe that the people who smoke weed for personal use like the people who smoke cigarettes or drink alcohol that they should not be put in jail that you can tax it and that you can manage it without it being a criminal enterprise because nothing else that they've been doing has been working and you have to face that reality. Together again, put them out with Calypso and joy as we friend. Let's put our country together again. Janice Lemon Cricky, Chairman Felicia Holder, um, former Deputy PRO Anthony Defoe, and now Director of Pep Media, they have a show every Thursday night called Frontline. But the party, unfortunately, has so much on its plate right now, they were unable to bring the show tonight, which is why I am doing this at 10 o'clock. We have been busy, but, but the... <sighs> But the Frontline show will be back next week, Thursday. Lyndon Mack, yes, I have seen that, I have heard that, I have been told that, I have researched that, I have brought that issue up, and those things have to be managed. I have been also told that a lot of those psychotropic effects of marijuana has to do with enhanced or marijuana. That, now, I am not a specialist, I don't smoke, but I know that there are professionals in the field, in the world, and between them, we could be guided. At the end of the day, we have to listen to everybody and make a decision in the best interest of everybody. But medicinal marijuana is a massive cash crop. It is grown on farms collectively in California, bigger than Trinidad and Tobago. So what are you telling me? We have to jump on that bandwagon. The truth of the matter is, 
the world is going in a certain direction. And if we don't get our piece of that action, we'll be left in the dark. Sticking a pen in that, Lyndon, if you're available to come to a meeting, I would like to have more conversation with you on it. Trinidad and Tobago, joke and fun aside, ship sinking. It's never stopped sinking. Every election, we get worse. Every election. We've never had a political party in power of which we could be proud. Ultimately, I used to say I was so proud of the People's Partnership for lighting up the playgrounds until I find out what the light up cost the country. I was proud of the box drains until I realized $600 billion worth of box train is not real sensible use of the public funds. The reality is we've never had a government come into office that care about the people. I want to tell you something. The reason we put that line, if you don't support the PEP, go ask your, the party that you support, go and ask them why you all never do anything like this. You know why? You know why we ask you to do that? Because they know these are the solutions. There are many more solutions. Move the port from Port of Spain, build a port 20 times the size up in Point Lisas, bring in foreign experts to run the port because shipping turnaround is a billion dollar industry and Trinidad is perfectly poised to make billions of dollars shipping turnaround. The ships don't come into the country and plenty foreign exchange will come in. Tourism, cruise ship tourism in Tobago, which is at the land there, do joint ventures with 20 companies, build 20 marinas, and turning over two ships a week, a million tourist feet on the ground, spending a thousand dollars, a billion dollars, US, right there. We could fix these things without blinking. This country has the best cocoa in the world, the best honey in the world, the second hottest pepper in the world and this who have the hottest pepper thing that's not the real issue you know. Trinidad pepper have flavor and that's why our pepper sauce is the real flick because it's one thing to say your pepper could take paint off the wall it's the next thing to know how to make a proper pepper sauce and if it's one thing we good at everybody granny tante mommy know how to take the green seasoning and the vinegar, the little bit of mustard and the peppers and make a pepper sauce for the family. We know. And you come and you see the pepper covered down in a jam jar with the wax paper out in the sun, taking sun because they want it hot. The more sun, the hotter the pepper. And, but to come back to this, everything we tell you is so counterintuitive. It's so common sense. It's so basic that when you hear it, you have to admit, Christ, that will fix the country. That those policies collectively is the solution. This is, this is the reincarnation, the reinvention, the rebooting of the republic. This will do it. It will work. These policies together, if 10% succeed, will turn Trinidad around. If all succeed, Trinidad and Tobago will be the number one country to live in in 10 years. Quick time. Quick, quick time. People who are not from here will lie and change their accent to sound like Chinese. Canadians will line up in the snow to get a visa at 4 o'clock in the morning because it will be hard to get. Everybody wants to land on the country small. Country small. Truth of the matter, this Saturday at noon, 19 Stanmore Avenue, we're out again. Come out. Add yourself to the growing mass, the Orange Army, the Progressive Empowerment Party family. Come and add your voice, your skill set, your money, Whatever you could do to help, it is a we thing. We say teamwork makes the dream work and we need all hands on deck. We need everybody who can give us a $10, $100, $1,000, $10,000. If you have it, make it available. It is our country we save in. You know? The truth of the matter is you and I, it is not just me. It is we. It is all of we. If it's going to save, because I can't do it alone. And if you're waiting for Philip to fail, so you can go kya kya, no problem. I will enjoy the rest of my life. I tell you all already, you know. I am fighting up to find myself in nobody parliament, you know. If you ever want to see 
something that is like frustration, go and sit down in the parliament. Go and see what they do. Go and see what they do, what passes for government. Go and sit down. Never visitors' gallery. Go and sit down and watch the exchange. And you don't want to shoot yourself. It is, it is less interesting than watching paint dry. Go and see. You think I want to spend five good years of my life and choosing that? This is a rescue mission. This is an intervention. This is running out in the sea because somebody drunk in. This is grabbing a bucket and a hose because a place on fire. This is not something that I would choose to do at this stage in my life. I happy and I pretty and I good to go. I don't need this. I like the rest of them who have to do this to stunt and hire to meet girls, you know. Don't need that. Anywho, this Saturday at noon, 19th Stanmore Avenue, we got to go and come and be a part of this. And we also, this Saturday at noon, we are gathering to walk about La Hoqueta Talbaro. If you want to be a part of the walkabout in La Hoqueta Talparo, reach out to Shari Wilson, who's heading up our mobilization team, Debbie Lee Jaikaran, who's working very closely with her on this walkabout, Ian Anthony, he is on the thread, he is the campaign manager for the La Hoqueta by election that must call, and we're going to provoke it until they call it. Today they made Marlene McDonald a minister in the Ministry of Communication and Planning. So that means brain dead Maxi Coffee continues to draw a salary. A junior minister comes to do the job, and that air fraud? That's not fraud? That's not corruption too? This country broken from within, set up to fail. These people need to be fired. They need to never be let near anything like government again. They need to be removed. The people of Trent Tobago need to rescue their country. If tomorrow, Kamala and the UNC votes with the PNM to pass that draconian anti-gang bill into law, the nation must no longer see any distinction between red and ready and yellow and steady. You will see that they are one and the same thing. If Rudal Munila and Kamala Pasad Bissessa put God out their thoughts Tomorrow, the people of Trinidad, listen, eh? they will make life hard and we have to be ready. We have to sit patiently. We have to count the days. We have to say 720 days, 719 days, 718 days. Count down to an election so we can rescue our country and vote them into infamy. I want to promise you this. Not only will we scrub down the parliament with black disinfectant and bleach, but every law passed in the past five years, we will send our legal team to work to repeal them all as we get into office. Clean house. We must make sure that anything that Keith Rowley and Faris and Rawi did, we remove from the country like a stain. Clean that stain. Get rid of it. Trinidad Tobago, we could do this. Do not allow the criminals and the bandits to get away with this. I promise you we could do this. I promise you we could fix this. I promise you we will get back all the money that they stole. We will make them fat because even if we don't get it back, you wouldn't enjoy it. And I promise you the people of Toronto Tobago that that drives me. All we, I have a deve overdeveloped norm of reciprocity. I hate injustice. Them stunt artists that drive it around town playing like they're successful. Successful bandits. But we will deal with that. This Saturday at noon, 19 Stanmore Avenue, Port of Spain. Come out in your numbers. Bring the family. If you could bake cake, if you could make cheese sandwich, if you could make acra, we haven't had acra in the office for a while. Bring whatever you could bring. We share with one another. It's a family affair. Come out if you, you don't have to bring nothing. Don't think that that's what I'm saying. I'm saying if you want to bring. Right? Um, finally, next week, Saturday, March the 10th, the Progressive Empowerment Party holds a public rally in La Hoqueta Talparo at Oakland Recreation Club. The mission to rescue Trinidad and Tobago, our election campaign, our general election campaign starts there. We are ready for whenever they decide to call it, we are ready to challenge the oligarchy for government. 
I hope you enjoyed our little get together tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to try for our Friday night line. But this was our session. So, yeah, till I see you again, stay safe, Joanne Tobago.